Okay, so we're going to get started uh, today, and the, uh, we only have four, counting today, we only have four lectures left. Um, remember also that next class, your assignment 204 is due. So that's two light fixtures, day and night rendering of each one. So four total renderings uh, required for that one. So you guys will make that post. Um, another reminder about the final. Everything is due on Monday the 20th. You do also, because of the way that they set up the 16-week um, the semester, uh, even though I pushed and had everything due on Monday, we do officially have class on Wednesday. So you have to show up, check in with me, say, hey, and then um, you guys can go work on whatever you want to work on. But I have to officially hold class because that's the way the requirements work now. But I thought it would be a lot nicer to have this stuff due earlier rather than on Wednesday and Thursday, which is when all the rest of your finals will be due, probably. So uh, everything's going to be due on that day. What we're starting today uh, for exercise 226, 227, and 228, so it's today, Wednesday, and next Monday, we're going to do three line drawings from Rhino. Today we'll do the elevation, then I think we do the plan, and then I think we do the section. I might be backwards on the plan and the section, but those are coming uh, in the next two classes. The reason that I emphasize this and I push this for you guys to learn is that you spend so much time creating a great 3D model in Rhino, why can't you use that to create high quality plans and sections to scale that are line drawings? And so you invest all your time in the Rhino file, let's get you a good quality line drawing out of that that you can use on your presentations. Uh, this is one of the skills that I have heard from former students at Berkeley that they're very, very thankful that they have. Uh, we will cover a command today called make 2D, which in my opinion is one of the best commands, kind of like project. It's just one of those ones that you have to know. Uh, and so we'll go through that one today as well. So you'll get really familiar with that. Uh, this will be a fair amount of repetition as we go through the next three class days. Today's the easiest one though, because we're not actually cutting any sections as part of it. We're just looking at our building. Uh, depending on the hillside, you may have to cut a, se hill, a section through part of the hill to make part of the hill go away when you do this work. Uh, my guess is that you'll probably be just fine um, for most of the elevations. We are only doing one elevation, so one north or south or east or west. You pick. Uh, that's it. That's all that's required. The other thing I will remind you is that part of the final, you will be turning in two of the three drawings that we're doing. So you can pick elevation, plan, or section, just two of those three. So if one of them doesn't really turn out, that's the one to get rid of. Uh, you can, of course, turn in all three. That works too. But minimum, I need two of those line drawings. Uh, don't get confused. Don't look at last semesters, because I cut that part out because of the smoke days that they had. So in your this semester, they are required. I'm here. We're actually teaching them. So don't, don't um, lose track of that. So we're going to go ahead today and do the elevation. The handout is so uninformative. Um, because it basically refers to the website. Go look at the tutorial on the website. Um, that is designed to help you guys out right here, Assembly 10.8. The reason it's in Assembly is because it's requiring both Rhino, V-Ray, and Illustrator to kind of put the whole thing together. But it does walk you through step by step and explains all the stuff that I'm going to be going through today. Um, so you can go through and, uh, and learn from it. Okay. So the first thing that I need to do is I need to think about which elevation I want to end up seeing. And in my building, this is the stronger elevation um, versus that elevation. But I could do either one. It doesn't, doesn't really matter. These elevations here are far less exciting. Uh, so the likelihood of me choosing one of those as my elevation is not very high. So I'm going to work with this side here. Uh, and if we have time a little bit later, maybe I'll show you how to cut through this section so that you can end up showing the elevation there. So in this view, the elevation's pretty easy to start to establish. The hill is, is going away from me, so I'm not, not overly worried about it. Before, however, I start to create this, I do want to do a save as because I'm going to create some, some issues with my drawing long term. So I want to make sure it's not my final drawing. I'm working on a scratch copy of it as I move forward. So I'm going to go ahead and do a file save as. And in the save as here, I'm going to call this one um, elevation. And I'll go ahead and click on save. Perfect. Now I have the elevation view. So as I start to establish the elevation view, a couple things are really important. First off, I need to make sure that I'm in parallel projection, not in perspective. 
if your building is on axis, it's pretty easy to just go to set view, and then you can pick front, uh, back, left, or right, depending on which view it is. I think mine's the back view. There we go. That makes life really easy, because you can just set it up that way. Uh, if your building is off axis, you may find that it's easier to orient the camera to a particular surface. So if you find a surface, you can orient the camera to that surface. Uh, let me go ahead and show you that, because for some of you, let me go back to perspective here. There we go. So if this wasn't on axis, which it is, but if it wasn't, if I create a surface, I'm just doing a vertical plane here. Let me turn on my object snaps. Oops. My, sorry, my C plane wasn't set correctly, so. Uh, so you just want to make sure that this is in plane with your building, whatever that is, even if it's out of plane. And then when you orient the camera to surface, you're going to go come down here to set camera, and you're going to say um, orient camera to surface. It's going to ask you the surface to orient to. That would be the surface right there. And then it says select point on surface. So you just have to pick where the surface is, and it's going to orient. The arrow was pointing back toward the camera, if you saw that. Let me go back here for just a second. So I was like this, and I went to my little downward facing triangle. I went to set camera, and then um, orient camera to surface. There's that surface that I created. And see how the arrow, the direction, is pointing toward the camera. So the camera is going to be looking the opposite direction as the arrow. People get confused on that one. If you wanted it going the opposite way, you could flip the arrow. But we want to orient to the surface in that capacity like that. And that's then going to reorient our surface. That's if it's off axis. If it's on axis, you could just pick front, back, left, or right. And that makes life a whole lot easier. But there it is. Now, remember on this view, I just went to that. But it is still in perspective. So I need to change my projection type back to parallel so that it's an actual elevation. So I now have it set up as an elevation. That's good. Let me go ahead and save that view. I'll click the down arrow here. I'll go to Set View, Named Views. And this is going to be saved as my front elevation. And I'll go ahead and say OK. There it is as the front elevation. That lets me come back to it later on. OK. So as I start to prepare this file for its rendering uh, and ultimately for its line drawing here, I want to have an idea of where this viewport really is. And so if I click on the little downward facing triangle, I can go to set view and I can go to show, or excuse me, set camera, show camera. And then nothing shows up in this view, but in my other views, I'm going to get the camera. Let me look at it in perspective. That's the easiest one to see. Right there, I'm going to get the camera. Because it's in parallel projection, the triangle that represents the camera is really long. That's how V-Ray and Rhino set up the camera. If I switch this over into either, uh, let's do wireframe. It's a little bit easier to see. There's that camera view. I want to know where the outer bounds of this camera view are. So I'll do that by using a regular rectangle right here. And it's going to be a three point. And I can snap. Let me turn on my point snap here. I'll snap from this point to that point and down to that point right there. And that creates this rectangle. This rectangle is exactly 1 quarter of the front elevation view. The reason that I did it and snapped to those points is there's no points out here to snap to. So I'm stuck with those three points. So it makes it a little bit easier. The good news is, since this is exactly 1 quarter, it's double the size to get to the full size. So I can do a scale command with this upper corner as my base point, And I can scale by 2. So I'll just type in 2 and then Enter. And now it's exactly the same size as my viewport. So this matters. And you can see it right here in the front elevation view. There's a faint little yellow line running around the very outside of my, of my viewport. That's good. 
This matters because when we do the export, we're going to need to know where that viewport boundary is. So I'm going to hit Escape twice so that nothing's selected. And then I want to create a two-dimensional drawing of this particular file. Uh, but actually, I think it would be helpful if I went ahead and I uh, did a bunch of contours going up here so I could see the contours as the elevation. The um, image that's at the bottom of your page doesn't have the contours, and I think it ends up looking better with the contours. So I'm going to go ahead and do that really quick. Uh, I'm going to do a contour of, jump back into the perspective view here, of the terrain. So let me go into set view. Uh, let's just change this into shaded so you can see it a little bit better. Oops. There we go. OK, so I want to contour this piece of surface. I'm not going to contour all of it. I'm going to contour that piece of surface. So let's go ahead and type the contour command. I'm contouring this particular surface. I'll hit Enter. Uh, and we're going to, that's a base point. My direction perpendicular to the contour planes, I want that going straight up and down. I'll do that in the front view here. There it is, straight up and down. And I don't know, let's do it at about 10, mm, 5 feet. Before I create it, though, I really should create its own layer for the contours. So let's make that layer active. And then we'll go ahead and hit Enter. It's going to take a little while to do this because I did it at such a precise interval, but it's going to end up looking better in my front elevation view to have them at about five feet versus The alternative to this would be to draw a box and project onto the, um, the terrain so that it had a much smaller area to contour. Probably would have been more efficient. So you guys can just work for a little bit while I let this finish. OK, so it finished. I uh, apologize for that uh, delay. But that then gives me all of the contours. The ones that I care about are only in this little section here. So there's lots of extra ones that really don't need to be there. Uh, I could go as far as deleting a bunch of them if I wanted to, just to clean things up a bit. I know I don't need the upper part or the lower part. Like that, I'm still getting the ones that I need. So to right about there. And likewise, we can go up to right about there. And those are all the, the contours that I don't need. So I'm keeping the section in there that I do need, getting rid of the section that I don't need. Uh, and so now that I have those, I'm going to jump back to this front elevation view here. And I'm going to use a command, um, and this is the one that I was talking about being important, called Make2D. And what Make2D does is it takes any view, and it doesn't have to be one of the flat views, like an elevation view, but it could be a three-dimensional view, and it creates a live line drawing view of that particular view. So it creates a bunch of flat lines that represent this view. Let me show it to you. So I'm going to go ahead and in the front elevation view here, I'm going to type make 2D. And when I type make 2D, it's going to say select objects to draw. I can select all, or I could actually uh, make a selection that includes just what's inside of my viewport. I do want to make sure that I also include the outermost viewport uh, boundary, that rectangle that I created earlier. So I have everything here. And when I'm done, I'll go ahead and press Enter. That then brings up the 2D drawing options. Under drawing layout, we're going to do the current view. And then down here, I have some options. I can show tangent edges. I can show hidden lines. And I can maintain source layers. So the hidden lines option is going to choose whether or not I have hidden lines for all the things that I see inside of my building. So hidden lines for uh, even like the chair, for example. It's kind of useful for things like stairs to be able to see those. And depending on your output, sometimes it's useful to have the hidden lines. Sometimes it's not useful to have the hidden lines. It's kind of up to you. I'm going to go ahead and turn those on. The next thing here is do you want to maintain the source layers or not? And so for those of you that have worked with Illustrator before and are comfortable in Illustrator, I would encourage you to maintain the source layers. The advantage of maintaining source layers is that if you've organized your file well, 
and you have layers for walls and doors and whatever, those layers will exist in Illustrator and let you change line weights appropriately with those layers. If you don't maintain the source layers, it will create two layers for you. One will be hidden and one will be visible. That's it. And then you'll have to go through and manually select layers. But if you've never worked in Illustrator or are uncomfortable working in Illustrator, that's a pretty easy option because everything's on one layer or the other. So that's the, the default would be to not maintain the source layers. Uh, but if you feel a little more comfortable, go ahead and check the box to maintain the source layers in uh, this Make 2D option. So I'm going to go ahead, now that I've, I've set those, so I've shown the hidden lines, I'm going to maintain the source layers, and I'm going to go ahead and say OK. Now this process can take a bit of time, but what Rhino is doing is it's looking at the active viewport, in this case the front elevation view, and it's doing a line drawing version of this front elevation for me. So it's flattening everything out and it's writing that flat elevation at 0, 0. So it's going to take a little bit of time. Again, I'll let you guys go back and work while this finishes. OK, that wasn't too bad. And so when it's done here, it's gone ahead and it's taken all of my layers, and it's made a new master layer called Make2D. Then it has a sublayer called Visible and a sublayer called Hidden. And then all of the various layers are hidden underneath that. The line drawing that it created is not something that we can see in the front elevation. Instead, it's something that we're going to see in the top view. So if I zoom out here, there is the elevation view, including the hillside. But the only part that really matters is the part that's inside of that rectangle. You see why that rectangle was important. So now that I have that, I can actually select the rectangle pieces themselves, like that. And I can go ahead and type trim and get rid of the pieces of the rectangle that are not important. Likewise, I can go ahead and get rid of all these other pieces of the hillside, etc., because those aren't important either. So bear with me for a second. All that's left is my actual view here. And so you can quickly see that everything that's white are hidden lines, including things that are inside of walls, etc. And everything that is black are the lines that you can visibly see. So at this point, I'm going to take this whole drawing, and I'm going to go ahead and move it from this corner to 0, 0, 0. Let me zoom, followed by S for selected, and there it is. It's very important that you move it to the origin, because when you do the export to Illustrator, if it's not at the origin, it will be off the artboard when it comes into Illustrator. So we have to make sure it's at uh, the correct position here at 0, 0. Um, I have a little bit of my foundation that could be trimmed off. All of these corrections you can do after the fact in Illustrator, or you can spend a little bit more time um, working on them and correcting them in, uh, in Rhino before you do the export. Um, the other thing that you'll see is that all of the layers here are in white. That is a little bit challenging, ultimately, in Illustrator because the white will confuse you. Um, so you may want to change the colors of all these layers. Uh, it doesn't really matter what the colors are. Well, let's see if I can change them all at once. I'm just going to change them to red. There we go. I might have to expand. Yeah, I'm going to have to expand <laughs> some layers here, so bear with me. OK, so let's see here. Let's go there. Let me just go to the bottom. And we'll change all of the colors to be red, like that. That way, all the hidden lines are red rather than white. Oops, I thought I made all of them. Well, it looks like there's still a few white lines. Not quite sure where those are. Let's see where. Finish their railing. Hmm, I don't know. They must be minimized. Anyway, it doesn't really matter. We can do it after the fact in Illustrator as well. OK, so now it's time to create the Illustrator file from this line drawing. I can go ahead and select 
all of those lines. And I'll go up to the File menu, and I'll choose Export Selected. And with Export Selected, I'm going to change the Save As type to Adobe Illustrator.ai. You could technically go to AutoCAD if you'd rather. Uh, for our purposes, I'm going to take it into Illustrator. Um, it's just a matter of preference. So I'm going to go into Adobe Illustrator. Under the Options here, I'm going to change and I'm going to choose to preserve the model scale. This is where I actually assign a scale. So if I wanted it to be a quarter of an inch equals one foot, it's going to be 48 inches is equal to one inch. And I have that, if you guys get lost there, I have this written out in the tutorial. Let me go to that one right there so that you know what the scale. So quarter inch equals a foot is going to be 48 inches equals one inch in this dialog box. OK, so I have that set. Color mode RGB, that's fine. The rest of this is all fine. I'll go ahead and say OK. But then I have to give this a name. So let me go into my flash drive, choose where to save it. And what are we on? 226. There's our elevations. Let me create a new folder for today. All right. And I'll click Save. It'll bring up the options one more time. Those I already set, and we'll go ahead and say OK. That then wrote an Adobe Illustrator file for me. So let me go ahead and jump over into Adobe Illustrator, and let's take a look at that file. I'll go to File, and then Open. And there's my front elevation. I'll go ahead and say Open, like that. Perfect. Let me press Control minus so we can see out a little bit here. This is the overall size of the drawing that I created. The white space here is my artboard. That's what Illustrator is letting me work with. I'm going to edit that artboard to expand to be the same size as my drawing. So let me come in here and go to the artboard tool, which they've conveniently changed the icon. There it is. And I'm going to adjust the edges so that this lines up perfectly with the viewport boundaries that were exported as well. So there it is. It snapped to those corners. That's my artboard. When I'm done, I'll go back to the direct selection tool or the, the regular selection tool. I can press Control-0. And now I can see, well, it's not quite right. Let me edit that artboard one more time. I was too far away here. Make sure it snaps right to those lines. That looks good. That looks good. There it is right there. All right, now I have that artboard set. So with the artboard set, Control-0 again, I can see the overall line drawing. And I can start to manipulate this line drawing and make it look a little bit better than it does. So over here under Layers, you can see that there are a bunch of layers that have been created for me. And it's kind of a big mess. So what I like to do first is I like to create two layers. One I'll call hidden, and the other I will call visible. It would be nice if they exported the nested layers rather than just exporting all the layers. And so what I'll do, let me make this a little bit bigger, I'm going to go down and I'm going to select all of the hidden ones first. So I'll hold down the Control key on the keyboard, and I'm just going to keep clicking wherever it says hidden. You could do the opposite. You could start with the visible. It really doesn't matter. <coughs> all right, I've got all of those. I'm going to click and drag and put them on the hidden layer so that they become a sublayer. Then I can come through and I can select all the visible lines. There's all the visibles. I'll hold down Shift. And I'm going to put all of those on the visible layer. And then I can kind of close those down. This lets me work a little bit easier with groups of, of uh, my objects. So first thing I can do is I can turn off the hiddens altogether. And I can see what my object looks like with the visible lines. 
I can then go through and I can start to make modifications. So I could come in here and I could look for the visible lines and the window versions. So these are things that have the windows on them. I could select all of the lines on that layer by clicking right next to the circle here. That would select all of those lines. And I could then edit the properties of those lines. So I could come over here and under stroke, I could say, you know what, I want the windows to be 0.25 points. So they get a little bit thinner. There they are a little bit thinner. I could come back to my layers and I could say, okay, what other what other layers have windows? Those are windows. Sometimes you need to really expand this a little bit more. There's window mullions. All right, that looks like all of them. I could go back to properties here. And we'll change that to 0.25, like that. The other option would be to go through and manually select things. So I could select the outer walls by holding down Shift, and I could work my way through all of the outer walls. It's Again, it's, it's a matter of preference. There is always going to be some cleanup work to do. So there I have that window. This is the line of floor. Well, I don't need that line because it wouldn't really show up in the elevation. So we can go ahead and delete those. Somehow these windows got, those pieces of the windows got put on the wrong layer. So we could go through and change that 0.25. And now that's corrected as well. So you kind of have to go through and spend a little bit of time making some corrections. So that there could also go to 0.25. But the outermost boundary there should be a little bit thicker. Let's do that at one point. Looks like I have some lines that aren't colored correctly. So those purple ones, I could go to the Select menu. And I could say Select Same Stroke Color. That would select all the purple lines. And I could say, well, first off, let's change the color to be black. That's better. And let's leave it at one point. Those are changed. I could select the blue here. I could say Select Same Stroke Color. Those are all the blue. We could change that to black as well, like that. This line here is the roof. We don't need that. That can go away. I don't need that red line there. I don't need that little piece. Oops, let me zoom in here. So there's always a little bit of touch up work to do. But as you start to look at this, you can see that it created a very accurate elevation for me. That is a line drawing that I could use as a line drawing. Furthermore, that is all the way to scale. Uh, looks like some of my s slope here didn't get included. So you may find that you need to create a little bit more. I'll use the pen tool here. Start there, and I'll come down and create. Oops. Let me not snap to that. Let me go a little bit fast it. Maybe like that. Let me disconnect those two points. There we go. This was the joint between my pool, but that really can go away. That line doesn't belong there. This diagonal line doesn't belong there either. I need this to continue up to that point. So I'll go back to my pen tool. We'll start there, and we'll continue all the way up to right there. This line here is a little bit long, so we'll, we'll pull that one back. Then that line can go away. This line here could actually come all the way to there. That is a piece of terrain. Actually, it doesn't belong there, because that should be all one continuous piece. So there's always a little bit of kind of touch-up work to do. That would connect from here to there, like that. So you can see how I'm working my way through. This diagonal here can go away. That diagonal can go away. All right, we're starting to get there. This diagonal here, that can go away. So I'm concentrating on the building outlines. This should be a little bit thicker. You can also, with something selected, you could use the um, eyedropper tool to match the properties of something else. So if you already have a, a particular property set, like 
Those up there, I want those to match the windows. That'll change that a little bit faster. This one here, I want to match that thicker piece. This here, I want to match that piece. And let me come back and match to those pieces, etc. You get the idea. So I'm working my way through, making sure I've selected everything uh, and that the line weights are the way I want. I also have the option to thicken up certain pieces of line weight. So the further away I am, maybe I want the outline of my building to end up being thicker. So I want pieces like this, maybe I want those to be up at two point. Maybe I want this one to be up at two points which would mean that one would be up at two points. Anyway, you get the idea of working your way around. So I'm going to spend a little bit of time working through the drawing, kind of cleaning it up, making it look good. Now, I have some other options. I have all these contour lines that were selected. Let me hold down Shift and select the rest of the contour lines there. And with these contour lines, maybe I don't want them to be black. Maybe I want them to be a fainter shade of gray, so I'll make them kind of a light gray color. I also could change uh, what the stroke really looks like. So let me bring up my stroke window. I'll go to window and then stroke here. There we go. Let me show all the options. And maybe I'd like those to be dashed instead. So maybe, um, you know, maybe a six point by six point dash. And let's click off and take a look at them. And so now see how the, all those have become dashed lines? They have, le oh, you guys can't see them. Never mind. Let me change those back to black because you're not going to be able to see them. Nope. I love it when it doesn't do what I want them to do. There, black. Thank you. There, now you can see those dashed lines. So I can make those dashed lines uh, as well. I could take these, and I can use the eyedropper to match to that, and they should match. So you can use that eyedropper to kind of work your way through. So that's just a way of identifying where those contour lines are, but underemphasizing them. When it comes to the hidden lines, so those were all the visible lines, the hidden lines, I could take all the hidden lines. I'm just going to select all of them right now. There they all are. I'm going to make all of them a faint gray color, something like that. I'll make all of them dashed. So let me go into uh, my window and then stroke again. There it is. I'm going to make them all maybe 0.2. I'm going to make them all dashed. And instead of six, I'm going to make that much finer. We'll go one by one. So there are little itty bitty lines there. And now all of those, they're there. You guys will never be able to see them. But they're, they're extra information. And that can add to some depth in the overall uh, final drawing. So that you guys can see them, I'm going to darken that up. There you go. Whoops, it didn't look like I got them all. There. There you go. Now you can see those lines a little bit better. So it's just an extra layer of information. It doesn't overpower the elevation, but it gives us a little bit more about what's going on inside the building as you start to zoom in. And that can be nice in a, in a presentation drawing. Let me go ahead and press Control-0. So I've got the elevation figured out. I've, drawn, I've gone ahead and I've drawn the elevation, minus some corrections and some line weights, etc. But sometimes it's also nice if we use a little bit of the uh, fact that we can render this drawing to give some shadow or some depth to the drawing behind the line drawing. So I'm going to go back to my um, file here, and I'm going to create what is called a clay rendering in this front elevation view. And so the idea behind a clay rendering is that instead of um, having colors or textures or anything, we're pretending that the building was just made out of a piece of clay, and we're doing kind of a black and white rendering of it that would show shadows. And so I have on the course website 
which many of you have already seen, under the resources and the V-Ray quick rendering setups here. And as you come down here, I have something called Clay Rendering 1. This is one of the quick setups for you, designed to make your life a little bit easier. I'm going to go ahead and download this. I'll right click on the Clay Rendering VizOpt file and choose Save Link As. I'll then save it to my flash drive. And in the case of today, I'll go ahead and put it into today's folder. And I'll click Save. Remember, if you were to click on this, it's going to give you an XML file. Not useful. So instead, right click and say Save Link As. I'll jump back here. And this is, again, a point where I'm going to destroy part of my drawing. But this is a copy, so it's not a big deal. I'm going to go ahead and open the V-Ray options. I'll open a drawer. It doesn't matter which one. And I'll click on the Load button. And I'll go find the VizOpt file. There it is. And I'll go ahead and say Open. When it loads, it will collapse everything. That's a good sign. Let me go into my output now. I'm going to unlock the aspect ratio, and then I'm going to get the view aspect. So it's exactly the same as the view, which is important because that has to match up with the, the um, Illustrator file. Then I can up the size of the rendering, and so I can make it as large as I want. Remember, if you do a multiplier of 300 times however many inches the drawing is, that's how you would get to the, the size. So this is probably going to end up being uh, bigger. So we'll jump up to maybe 5,000. Uh, and then this is going to be ready to render. Before I do that, though, I'm going to do a small version so you guys don't have to wait and watch me do it. Let me just double check that it's working. I'll do it at 100 by 46. The other thing that I may need to do is I may need to adjust the vector of the sun, uh, or I may need to adjust the power of the sun, one or the other. So let's go ahead and do a quick render and see what happens. I'll click on the render button. I'll take a look. Yeah, looks like it turned out OK. In the ideal world, if these settings are correct, we're going to get just shadows on the building, and everything else is going to be white. So it looks like it was set up correctly. I can go ahead and increase the size. Let me go back to my V-Ray options right there. And so we'll jump this one uh, up a bit. We'll go maybe 5,000, not 50,000, sorry, 5,000. And we'll go ahead and render. This should not take anything special. It shouldn't take a network render because it's, rend it's, it's rendering basically black and white shadows. You can see that I have a problem. I didn't actually put a pane of glass on that door, so you can see in. OK, so it finished. I'm going to go ahead and save. Uh, in this case, I'm just going to save the black and white version. I'm not worried about the rest of the channels. So I'll click on the Save icon. I'll put it into my flash drive. Um, we'll call this Front Elevation 01 Clay. And I'll go ahead and click on Save. And that'll then save this version. I can then jump back over into the Illustrator file. 
I can go to File and then Place, and I can drop in that clay render. And I was very careful each time to make sure that everything always lined up. My viewport was always the same, which is going to make lining these up that much easier. So let me go ahead and adjust the size of this. I can actually hold down Shift and keep the size in proportion. And that clay render is going to drop right behind my line drawing. And it should be perfectly like that. Now, if the clay render is a little bit too dark for the line drawing, if you're seeing too much of it, um, oh, and I should have put that on its own layer. Let me go ahead and create a new layer. And let me change that to be up on, there we go. We'll call this line drawing. All right, this is clay render. And let's put the clay render below the hidden layer in the layer stack. And there it is. So if that ended up being too strong, I could select the object, I could go to Properties, and I could adjust the opacity. So we could have dropped that opacity down so that it wasn't quite so strong. It's amazing how different it looks on the projector. There's a point at which you kind of get the happy medium, where you're getting enough of it behind, but it's not overpowering the line drawing. For me, um, I mean, on this computer screen, it would be even less than what it is on the projector right here. It's a little bit too dark. But you'll find that kind of naturally what the right place is. The idea here is that it's giving you a background uh, with a little bit of shadow so that your building and your line drawing really start to stand out. And you already have that information. You already have the sun. So it's really easy to create that rendering uh, effect that goes behind your drawing itself. So the last piece of this is sometimes um, Students like to add a little bit of texture to one part or the other of it. Um, you can see on the, the handout, I added a little bit of texture to it. Um, we can do that. We can add a little bit of grunge texture either above in the sky or down below where the ground is. It's just a matter of personal preference. Um, and I can do that in a couple different ways. I can actually use one of the channels here. If I go to the alpha channel, I'll get the cutout for the top. This can be useful. Let me go ahead and save that channel. I'll call this one alpha. That just gives me the transparent part up top here. And let me jump back to my Illustrator file. Let me create a brand new layer for this. For lack of a better term, we'll call it alpha. Again. And I'll go to File and then Place. And I'll drop this in. so that it goes behind my drawing. And then I'd like to, on this background here, I'd like to apply a um, opacity mask. And I may have to actually open up the opacity window. So let me go to Window and then Opacity. Transparency, sorry. There it is. And so I want to add a mask. So right here on that layer, I'm going to click on Make Mask. And then on the background, I'm going to click to get in that. And then I'll paste in a grunge texture for this. And I'll go to File and then Place. I'm not spending too much time going through this part of it because this is kind of a whole other topic. I just want to show you that this is here. And you can go back and look at the video and see how I did it if it's something that you really end up wanting to do. Let me go on my flash drive. I already have a bunch of uh, grunge textures. In the Resources folder, I have a folder called Grunge Textures. And I can then drop in one of my grunge texture backgrounds. Maybe it's that one. And we'll go ahead and drop that in. Let me make this a little bit bigger, maybe about like that. And this might not be the exact right <laughs> one to choose, uh, but I'm trying to show you that as an example. When I'm done here, I can switch back into the main view. And now that's being collaged in up where the sky would be. It's probably a little bit strong, so I might need to adjust the opacity of that object down. Oops. Sorry, it doesn't look like I actually selected it. There we go. So that it's not overpowering. You guys probably can't even see it. There, you can see it just a little bit. Uh, and so let me go ahead and press Control-0 so we can zoom in on that. And that gives a little bit more texture to the background. So again, it's just techniques to kind of enhance things. Um, the alternative would be to flip this around and make the ground that texture. Um, I, I can do that by just flipping 
the um, the transparency mask. If I invert that, I can do it. So let me go back over just so you can see that. Let me go to view, sorry, window, and then where's my opacity or transparency? Oh, it's already open. Oops. All right, on this one, I should be able to invert it. Sorry, wrong one, this one. No. Sorry, it's been a while. In Photoshop, it's just Control I, but for whatever reason, it's not. I don't have to look it up how to invert it in uh, in Illustrator. I could open it in Photoshop, invert it, and then bring it in again, uh, and that would just change whether it's the sky showing or the ground showing. Just a different different choice. Anyway, for my purposes, it's fine. I'll leave it like this, so that you guys can see it. So this is how you would create uh, the line drawing. Uh, and actually, it looks like my uh, background texture didn't quite line up correctly with uh, the sky, so I'm not sure what happened there. Um, it could have been in the rendering. Um, but anyway, so this is how to create your line drawing elevation out of your, um, out of your Rhino file. I know it's a lot of kind of steps to go through. The key part is the make 2D part. The rest of it is all just Illustrator collage work and deciding what looks good and what doesn't look good um, after the fact. Okay, So I encourage you, and I had encouraged you to be finished with your model today, because that means you can concentrate on your line drawing views. If you're not finished with your model, it would be really good to finish your model. Um, because basically today we're going to do the elevation view, or we did the elevation view. Next class, we'll do the plan or the section, and then next Monday, we'll do the opposite, the plan or section. I don't remember off the top of my head which one it's going to be. And then on Wednesday of next week, which will be the last official lecture, we're going to spend a little bit of time with some Photoshop and some Z-Depth for the perspective view. So you can see some of the effects that we'll do um, in that. Other than that, those are your four class days left. So use them wisely, but try to get things done, because I want you to get these line drawings out and feel comfortable with the line drawings. Okay?